Welcome to our overview of Platform RTM, a comprehensive monitoring and reporting dashboard for Platform LSF environments. Platform RTM is purpose-built to monitor Platform LSF environments. I'll select the Grid tab to look at my clusters. I have 100 nodes being monitored across three different clusters. I can see key attributes and measures for each node, gain shell access through the web browser, and drill in on any node to get more information. I see details like host type and model for each node, their status on the cluster, and whether they're processing jobs. I also see indicators of relative performance and CPU and memory use. I can customize the list of attributes I want to see to my liking through a drag and drop interface. I can filter the list of nodes by model, group, status, or user, in addition to searching based on keywords. I can also search on one or more columns to make the hosts easy to find, even in large environments. I'll filter this list to see only the hosts that are part of the build cluster. The build cluster is used to compile and link large software projects targeting multiple operating systems and hardware platforms. I'll drill in on a particular Windows host processing jobs. Now I'm filtering jobs. The list of jobs includes only the host we selected on the build cluster and only active jobs. In this view I see details like physical and virtual memory consumed by each job as well as CPU time and CPU efficiency measures. I'll cover alarms later, but if this job had any alarm conditions, I'd see them indicated with color codes to make them stand out. It's the ability to link jobs to resources and vice versa that makes Platform RTM so useful to administrators. I'll drill in on the execution host for more detail about the machine that the job's running on. As a cluster administrator, I have access to all kinds of information about clusters and hosts. I can see all the information about my host, how it's loaded, as well as details about the functioning of the batch system. I can view key measures visually over selectable time periods. I'll scroll down to show graphs of performance over the last day for this machine. I'll cover graphs in a separate module, but for any graph we can drill in on a particular time period, set threshold based alarms, or export data of interest. We see details like how memory and CPU are being used, I.O. levels, and load information as well as information about platform LSF jobs. I'll scroll back up. Now I'll look at the cluster dashboard. I'm monitoring three clusters in this environment. I can quickly see that I have a problem with one cluster where the collector appears to be down. These kinds of conditions can raise alarms automatically. I can also perform basic administrative activities through this interface. I'll select the build cluster to manage services on the cluster. LSF administrators can perform common operations related to the load information manager, remote execution service, and the master batch daemon all through the web interface. They can also reconfigure the cluster to reflect changes in configuration settings. This simplifies administration considerably. I can also monitor the cluster graphically using a host-based dashboard, which I'll select now. In this view, I see the nodes of each cluster color-coded so I can spot issues at a glance. This view can change automatically depending on the number of nodes I'm monitoring. By placing my mouse over any node, I get details about the batch status and load information. I also see important information like the CPU load and available memory, swap and temp space that if exhausted could cause the host to fail. I can also access a shell session to the host and look at running jobs or host graphs. As with the other list based views, I can filter on hosts based on things like host groups, host type, load status and batch status. I'll narrow this view to show only the hosts that are currently processing jobs. As the number of hosts change, the scale changes automatically. We see instantly the relative load on each host. Some are busy, whereas others are relatively idle. This might be a sign that we can gain efficiencies by scheduling more jobs to each host if memory permits. This host, for example, still has lots of capacity, so if I was running lots of similar jobs, I could easily put more jobs of this type per host, helping my users experience better service levels. I'll go ahead and click on the selected host to see the job running on it. Not surprisingly, this host is in an alarm state because it's running below our target efficiency. Despite running for almost three minutes, this job's only consumed 30 seconds of real CPU time for less than 20% efficiency. Measures of efficiency really matter because there's the potential here to get five times as much work done helping us boost productivity or reduce cost. I'll return to the host dashboard. This dashboard, like all views in Platform RTM, is configurable. As an example, administrators may want to exclude hosts in particular states by applying an exclusion filter. Exclusion filters, along with other preferences, are configured using the Settings tab. 
there are quite a number of configurable settings providing lots of flexibility. I'm looking at the general grid settings tab where I can control things like my default view of the cluster, clusters to monitor, and various other settings. I'll select the visual tab to configure what host states are excluded from the host view when the exclusion filter is applied. to exclude just by clicking on their names. I don't have time to explore all the different views available in the left column, but before I wrap up, I'll show a few other useful things starting with host groups. In this case, I'm looking at hosts that are members of a particular host group sorted by group name. I can filter to show only those hosts associated with a particular group. I'll select a group called Big Mem, comprised of hosts with larger amounts of memory. Another useful view new in Platform RTM8 is a queue distribution view. Platform LSF administrators frequently want to understand what queues are dispatching jobs to what hosts and host groups. I'll select queue distribution under the host info area on the left panel. This view shows us a matrix. As rows in the table we see our host computers, while as columns we see the queues that are able to dispatch to hosts with the number of job slots available on each host. Another nice feature of Platform RTM is that we can look at this information filtered by host group or queue group or do roll-ups based on groups. I might want to do a roll-up based on host groups to see the number of job slots available for each queue in each host group. I'll select Host Group Roll-up. For environments with large numbers of queues, I can further filter views just by typing the names of queues or groups by name. I'll enter a list of four queues I'm interested in looking at more closely. I see quickly that the normal and priority queues can use this host group, but the dev and release queues cannot dispatch to these host groups. This concludes our quick tour of Platform RTM's monitoring capabilities. As we've seen, the visual status indicators save time and effort, and administrators can get things done much more quickly. Administrators can improve efficiency and productivity by finding idle capacity and removing bottlenecks on the cluster. Platform RTM also allows us to perform common management tasks remotely and easily manage multiple clusters. It also provides valuable information that helps with capacity planning. Thank you for your attention.